This might be my favorite Switch controller. This is the 8-Bit Do Ultimate Bluetooth controller. And yes, it has been out for a little while now, but this is actually a new colorway and they've got a blue one as well. And well, they sent me one over to check out. So I thought I'd check it out with you. And that's a total lie because I've been using this for a few weeks now. And the more I'm using it, the more I love it because this is just a really, really high quality third party controller. And yes, I'm gonna start this by saying it's 8-bit do. So of course the D-pad is amazing. So let's go over some of the specs first. So straight away, I'm gonna say it's got Hall Effect Sensing joystick modules and they are amazing. We've also got six axis gyro for the Switch. Got some really nice face buttons on the front just here. Of course, a really nice colorway as well, which I've already talked about. We've got the D-pad. We have an array of buttons on the front, which I'll go over in a minute. We've got analog joysticks. And you're probably saying, yeah, well, the Switch doesn't support analog. Well, it actually does. It's just there's only like five games on the entire thing that actually support it. But the good thing is, is this isn't just a Switch controller. This is actually a multi-platform controller. So that's where this really kicks in with those, you know, analog triggers just there, which is awesome. So we've got two programmable back paddles. We've got a switch just here that says Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz. And that's because this does come with a dongle as well. We do have macro capabilities and we have rumble, of course, and we do have turbo capabilities as well. More on that soon. Now you're probably thinking, well, what are these three little dots just here? Well, that's actually a connection area to charge it, which I'll go over in a second. We've then got a USB-C on the top and a sync button, but then we have a mode button. This is the profile status. This is the player status LEDs. And then we've got minus plus star, which acts as screenshot on the switch. And then the 8-bit do button, which acts as the home button as well. And straight away, I was going to be like, well, you can't wake from sleep. Like what? What? Why? Like I need a controller that can wake my switch up from sleep. But don't worry, I was being an idiot. Because you can wake from sleep with this, you have to turn the controller on first and then shake it and just keep shaking it and shake it and shake it. And after a minute, there we go, there we go, there we go. That's it. Because I was just doing the classic press and hold home and that's it. And I was like, well, why is this not working? Because most controllers, you just press the home button and it wakes the switch up. And yeah, it wasn't until I like pressed the home button and kind of like moved it around a bit. And then it was like, oh, uh, it's awake now? And I was like, okay, it's using like the gyro in it to effectively wake, you know, send the signal to wake from sleep. So yes, it does wake <laughs> from sleep. So those connection dots on the back, which I actually love is for the dock because it comes with a dock, which is this here. So this effectively just sits down and boom, done, you've docked it, right? And then that's how you're going to charge, but it's so much more than that. And I really love it, I really do. I mean, you've got a, an LED indicator along the base just there, and this is a bit of a gripe. I'm gonna say this straight up. If you've got this plugged into the switch dock, how I've been doing it, because it doesn't plug into the wall, you can plug this into the wall because luckily they've given you just a USB-C port, which I'm a big fan of, because that means if the cable breaks or if you want to use a longer cable and route this somewhere like miles away, you absolutely can by providing your own cable. But they do supply this one just here, which is about a meter long and it's fine. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with this cable. But if you've got this plugged in to the switch dock, that LED light just kind of randomly turns on. Now, it's meant to be displaying when the controller is charging, but it doesn't. It just randomly comes on. So I've had this sat on the dock for a good couple of days without using it, and the light just comes on for like five, 10 minutes, and then turns off, and then comes on, and then turns off. And I'm like, what? Like, and it's really sporadic. I, like, I don't know when like it decides that this is gonna be it. And I don't know if it's a problem with the Switch dock randomly outputting power to the USB ports in case there's something plugged into them. I don't know, but that doesn't happen if you plug it into anything else. Plug it into a computer, doesn't happen. Plug it into a wall plug in the wall, doesn't happen. So it's just a thing that I've found that happens with the actual Switch dock itself. And it's kind of annoying because you can't turn this off. There's no like button on it to turn that LED off. 
and it's fine if you've got it plugged into anything else because I like that it shows you that it's charging and it turns off when it's charged but on the switch dock it just randomly comes on and off and because I've got it in front of my TV kind of annoying but besides that gripe just there I love the fact that there's a dock so I don't have to fumble around go oh yeah okay I've got to plug this in here and then just kind of like leave the controller laying around that's really frustrating so that is a good thing because I can nope don't need that Ding, there we go just on the dock and away you go. Now, of course, it's not like magnetized or anything. It's just gravity that sits in there, but I've had no issue with that at all. And it actually looks really cool. It makes it all look like one big sort of controller, which is quite cool. Now there's another trick to the dock before we move on. This actually houses the 2.4 gigahertz dongle in the base just there, which is awesome because not only do you have a place to stow this, it actually acts as like, uh, an extension essentially so you can absolutely plug this into a computer or whatever it might be that you're plugging it into and then you can use the 2.4 gigahertz receiver essentially and you do that just by flicking the switch on the base of the controller from bluetooth to 2.4 gigahertz now what i really like is you don't need to use this at all you can absolutely plug this into the dock just here like this Boom, and then shut this and forget about it. Because what you could do is have this docked on your PC, essentially, and have this ready to go. And you go, oh, I wanna play on my Switch. Okay, I'm gonna switch it to the Bluetooth mode. Don't need to do anything. I'm playing on the Switch. But if I wanna change over and use this on the PC, all I have to do is flick that over to 2.4 gigahertz. That wakes up the receiver in there and away you go. So you don't have to faff around with plugging things in and out. You can do that, but you don't have to. And I love that. Now the controller itself is absolutely lovely. Like it really, really is. It's got this lovely finish on it. It feels like high quality plastic. And on the back, we've got like a nice grip on the back as well. It is plastic. It's not rubber or anything, but it's enough to make it feel grippy, you know, like not too sweaty. If it didn't have that and you get sweaty, it would be slipping out of your hands. But with this, I absolutely think it's fine. I've been using this to play pretty much all of Mario Wonder mainly along with their 8-bit do SN30 Pro controller which I did a video on already and I love them like I, I, I absolutely love these controllers I've not had a problem with grip and I like the fact that it's based on the Switch Pro controller layout rather than an Xbox layout which is great I love the Xbox controller but because I'm using this as a Switch controller I mean it's designed for that right I like the fact that it resembles a Switch Pro controller. Now it is actually slightly smaller than a Switch Pro controller and it's got a much larger D-pad and a way better D-pad as well. And of course, better sticks also. But the only real difference is that this doesn't have NFC and it doesn't have HD rumble. And that's kind of like the, the two like negatives. I don't really care for NFC. All of my own Amiibos are boxed, but HD rumble I do care about and I would prefer it if it had HD rumble. So yeah, stylings are great. I love the smaller form factor. It feels lovely in the hands. Like it absolutely feels great. You know, I'm not having an issue at all, like reaching this amazing D-pad just here. And yeah, it feels lovely. The triggers are consistent, which is great because I do find a lot of the controllers I end up testing end up having inconsistencies. But of course from 8-bit do, I would expect better quality and we're getting it here. So we've got consistent triggers, which are nice. You can see they're kind of like a bit smaller in shape as well. And we've got the triggers just here, which are like scooped for comfort and they feel lovely. Yes, they are analog. And yes, you can change their sensitivity in the app. So you can change when they start to actuate. But I've had no issue just from the default configuration. Really nice, really good layout. Everything fits lovely. The face buttons are great. There's no like pre or post travel really. Like maybe if I'm being hypercritical just a smidgen of pre-travel and and that is like so small you won't even notice it i'm just being critical everything feels good you've got the profile switching button just here so now i've enabled profile one profile two and if there was a profile three then it would show but i've actually disabled profile three so it's just gone back to off and then of course we've got the back paddles which again feel lovely they fit into your hand really nice and I've not had an issue of like accidentally pressing them. And even if you are worried about that, you just disable it. They come disabled out of the box anyway. So no issues there whatsoever, which is excellent. I really like that. 
as well. I like this two-tone as well. I know I haven't mentioned that. It's all red on the front, but then we've got this nice like white like stripe down the middle of the back. I do like that also. And the plastic feels the same. It's not like a different texture or anything. And that grip travels all the way over like both sort of parts just here. So on the side and on this white piece as well. So now let's talk about the software because yes, it has software. This controller supports software essentially, both on your phone or as like an app that you download on the computer essentially. And you can load it up, you could change so much stuff. Let's just run through that now actually. So you can run through joystick calibration in terms of dead zone and also like where they cut out at, like the maximum like gate of it essentially. You can control the button remap of every single button. You can change vibration intensity. You can set obviously the buttons on the back here. You can assign turbo to these back ones or turbo hold to these back ones. And you can even assign macro to these back ones as well. Super easy to do in the software. I'm a little bit bummed out that as far as I'm aware, you can't do that on the fly here. So I'm so used to controllers letting you assign turbo and macro just without any software. Whilst I do like the fact that you've got the app, it means that you have another step to achieve those things. So you can't just on the fly do it. Let's say your phone's out of battery and you're not near a computer. Well, then you can't do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So that's my only kind of gripe is there's no button that you can press to then like assign the macro or turbo. Slightly disappointing, but overall it leads to a cleaner aesthetic. And of course, anything you've assigned, you can scroll through. So you can have one profile set up for one game, another profile set up for another, and another, and another, do you know what I mean? And so on. So you can have three profiles. So mine's default. And then I think profile one, I've got the back paddles to be the clicks in because I don't like L3 and R3. They really annoy me. So I like assigning those to the back paddles, which I've done for another profile, which is cool. But overall, all the software is actually really really good i like the software a lot it's really clean really easy to use and you can update the firmware on the controller as well just a little bit sad that you couldn't on the fly do those things i mentioned and now let's talk about those joysticks so yes we do have hall effect sensing joysticks and that means you know no dead zone which is awesome as well as the fact that you're not going to get drift over time so this is going to be like a longevity controller do you know what i mean this is going to stand the test of times because hall effect sensing joysticks effectively use magnets so hall effect sensing joysticks are better i do think it's kind of a bit of a buzzword just gonna say it it is a bit of a buzzword these days you can still get bad hall effect sensing joystick modules and there are some potentiometer controllers I've had for 20 plus years that are still working fine. Just seems to be on the Joy-Cons themselves that have really, really suffered from those potentiometer sticks. But yes, I can confirm that the sticks are gorgeous. They are absolutely great, which we can see here. So I'm hardly touching that and it is inputting immediately. So if you don't know, whilst I'm doing this, Dead Zone is effectively where you move the stick, you move the stick. Oh, and now it's inputting, right? So there is a zone that is dead before the stick moves past it and actuates with low to no dead zone sticks, which Hall Effect Sensing joysticks have a much less uh, dead zone area effectively, as you can see here, I can pretty much immediately get that controller to respond from the joystick being pressed immediately, you know? So I'm not having to move it to like here before it starts then moving. So that is awesome. But of course you can calibrate that in the software. The face buttons as well are absolutely perfect. I've never missed an input with them. They feel lovely. You've got like a dome kind of like, you know, they're, they're not flat, they're not concave. They are convex, I suppose you want to say. So they like dome out and they feel lovely. They are like a glossy finish and I don't dislike that at all. I, I actually quite like these, you know, I've not had an issue with this whatsoever. But of course, my favorite thing is the D-pad. It, it is, it really is because I do a lot of third party controller tests and pretty much every time the D-pad sucks. Like 90% of the stuff I review, the D-pads are where they fail hard, you know? And it's always something that they could improve on. I don't know why people just can't get D-pads right, but 8-bit do, do get, 8-bit do, do get, 
D-pad's right. That, that's the new name now. That's what they should uh, rename it to, right? And I love the fact that it's huge. It's a huge D-pad. You look at the official Pro Controller, the D-pad's tiny and it's not very good. It's okay, it's all right, but it's nowhere near as good as this. This D-pad is beautiful, it's huge, it's easy to get to, and for games like Mario Wonder, it is the perfect thing, you know? You, you really need a D-pad to play this game, like, properly, because a lot of the inputs need to be, like, straight away, like this. Like, to jump off Goomba's heads here, I need to be able to press up like consistently and I found playing this game which is why I made the video about the 8-bit do SN30 Pro controller because that's what saved me in this game. Playing with a joystick is fine but there's so much range of motion to be had right to get Mario to input that direction. It doesn't really work with a game like this. A platformer like this needs immediate input without any unnecessary travel, right? So I need to be able to run and jump on this guy's head to get to the flag, a top of the flagpole, for example, right? And I was finding it really difficult to do wall jumps and all that kind of stuff when I was using a joystick. And as soon as I transferred over to a D-pad, I just started winning immediately and I started doing all these really hard levels that I couldn't do before because I had ultimate control. With the ultimate controller, well just any controller but with the D-pad, but this one in particular is a brilliant all-around controller because I really haven't found anything that I dislike about this, other than the fact that <laughs> it doesn't have NFC, doesn't have HD rumble, and you can't assign the macro or the turbo on the fly. So I suppose I have found some things I dislike about it, but I love everything else about it so much that I can overlook those things. Now price-wise, you're looking at about £60 here, which is expensive considering you can get the actual official Pro Controller for about the same price, but this does so much more. You're getting the whole effect sense in joysticks, you're getting this dock thing, which Honestly, it's such a time save. Like, I love just putting my, putting my game down. I cannot talk. I love finishing my game and just going like this and knowing it's going to be charged. Oh, and it's got a 22 hour battery life with a thousand milliamp hour battery, which is amazing. So about two to three hours of charge for 22 hours of use. Amazing but I've not really tested that out because every time I stop playing, I put it on the dock and it's just fully juiced all the time. So yes, it is 60 pounds. Yes, it's fairly expensive, but I honestly think it's worth it. So you can get this on sale despite the fact that it's the new colorway. And I would say it's worth it. I'd pay full price for this, I would. I'd absolutely wait for a sale if you can because you can get it cheaper, why not? But I really do think this is worth it. The Hall Effect sticks, the feel of it all, everything's really good. Like the build quality just feels that next level up. Like it almost feels official, you know, almost. But there we have it. That is the 8-Bit Do Ultimate Bluetooth controller. It's a really good controller. I really like it. I love the fact that you get that 2.4 gigahertz dongle that can work with the dock as well. I love the fact the dock's got a removable USB-C so that you can change it or if it breaks then you don't have to worry like that is amazing. I love the fact that it works with Steam Deck as well so I can just have one controller that will work with any device which is pretty much like good for me and in terms of any device I mean like PC or Switch. But yeah, all around, I love this controller. It's all I've been using for like the past few weeks or all I've wanted to be using at least. And it's probably going to be my main Switch controller now. I think I'm gonna retire my official day one pro controller. So there we go. So what do you think of the Ultra Controller by 8 Do? Do you have one already? Or were you waiting for some new colors like this? I think it's quite suiting that Mario Wonder come out and then they made like a Mario Red, which is beautiful. It's such a deep red, I love it. I'm gonna stop talking about this controller now. <laughs> Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. And whilst you're down there, like this video, subscribe, and check out me and AJ over here on the podcast channel where we talk about all things gaming. Then check out another video from me down here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.